December 21st, 2017. I just want to uh, say thank you to Advancing Eco Agriculture for uh, their fantastic education, advice, and products. Um, those guys have really helped me turn my farming around into uh, a much better direction and, uh, and better understand nutrition and plant health. And I uh, <clears throat> kind of want to prove that point with this video. Um, here in the greenhouse, uh, back over the summer and into the fall, there was a massive, massive white fly infestation in here. Um, I did a whole bunch of research. The best I could find was a parasitic wasp. Um, but I knew that at the end of the day, the root cause for the problem with the white flies wasn't about what insecticide or pesticide to use or how to kill them, but how to prevent them from wanting to attack the plants by improving the plant's health. <clears throat> and that's a message I, that I learned from John Kempf, uh, who is uh, the founder of Advancing Eco Agriculture. And uh, I heard him speak at a 2013 Northeastern Organic Farmers Association conference. And uh, it changed my whole perspective um, I was already an organic uh, farmer and grower, but uh, <clears throat> it helped me understand how to, how to not use pesticides more effectively and how to get better plant health, better yields, and disease and insect resistance. And if you're a farmer or gardener or grower of any sort, you know how valuable that tool really is. Um, so uh, back to the main story here, uh, over the fall, uh, in the fall when I moved plants in, there was a massive white fly infestation. Um, I will show you a few of the uh, dead white flies and eggs here and there. Um, and especially on the bean plant, apparently they're very much attracted to beans. This is a uh, grape hyacinth bean plant that I brought in. Um, I'll let you get a close look at that. You can see all the dead white flies all over that. And there may be some live ones on that as well. Um, that was one of the recommended parts of using a parasitic wasp was use bean plants to attract them and let the wasp go after them on the bean plants. They're more likely to attack the bean plants. <clears throat> My guess is that's because the bean plants produce, um, well, not produce, but uh, assimilate a lot of nitrogen through rhizobacteria. I believe it's rhizobacteria. Um, anyway, so the whole greenhouse was infested. They attacked all of the plants, especially the citrus trees, especially the avocado, uh, especially the Texas tarragon. And I mean, they were all over these plants. And uh, I plan to grow uh, some wheat grass this year. Um, putting a shelf up here once the thermal mass barrels are in all the way and complete. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have uh, an issue like that prior to starting any new projects. So I uh, finally I said, okay, I'm gonna call AEA and ask them what they think it is and follow their advice and uh, just I have a kind of a working rapport with them already I've used them for many other issues and uh, I use their products uh, as a supplement to my uh, my program uh, my fertility program and uh, so anyway so they said that they suspected I had excess nitrate and nitrogen in my plants and they recommended supplementing with more molybed mol molybdenum and so I said, okay, what do you have with molybdenum? And they said they have one product with molybdenum. And he said uh, also that I probably had some deficiencies in some of those other uh, more macro trace elements. And uh, they have a product for that as well. So <clears throat> the product that I used is uh, this one right here. It's called Micropack. 
and uh, you'll notice it has uh, sulfur, boron, cobalt, copper, mag manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. And uh, so I started using the product, trying to address the soil deficiency issue. And uh, it's been about a month since, since I started that program. And uh, you'll see that there aren't any more white fly problems on these plants. The white flies won't attack these plants. And uh, occasionally I come through and there's a hatch flying around underneath the fluorescent light here. That's a real easy way for me to detect them. I, use, I leave this light on all the time, both so I can get in and out to stoke. And also because that's where all the bugs come to in the greenhouse and so I can identify who's in here and get a better idea of what they're doing. Uh, so uh, the other night I had a huge hatch come out and I said, huh, that's interesting. Um, I really wasn't concerned because I saw what happened once I got the nutritional deficiencies corrected and we got some of that excess nitrate out of the plant. And uh, so uh, the next day I come out to start the greenhouse furnace up and here they are. Apparently they couldn't find anything to eat so they came to the water and fell in the water and died. Or maybe they died of starvation, I, I don't know actually. Um, but there they are. That hatch didn't attach to any plants and died out. Now I use the same soil for pretty much all these plants, very same uh, organic soil mix and obviously I did have a trace mineral deficiency in there or a micro mineral deficiency shall we say. Uh, so with that corrected I also applied that same fertility program to the tomatoes over here. Uh, and these are doing absolutely excellent. I did have one green worm. I'm not sure what he is. He wasn't a tomato hornworm, but he was in here munching on a bunch of these. And I thought maybe I had a mouse or a mole chewing on him. And so I got ticked off and I set a mouse trap here. And I didn't catch anything, and I still didn't catch anything, and the damage kept going. And so finally I noticed a little green worm over here on one of these plants. So I pulled him off and stumped him. And since that I haven't had any issues. Um, I, we don't see any white flies on these plants. Uh, maybe that's one there. But it uh, doesn't look like he's too active. Eh, there's a couple here and there. Um, but they're not destroying the plant and uh, white flies usually attack the plant and they kind of like aphids they're very much like an aphid and they uh, they typically they'll chew on the plant and that'll cause the plant to bleed what's called honey it's kind of a sweet sticky sap uh, obviously that's high in nitrate nitrogen and uh, so they usually feast off of that um, but I don't see any honey developing even where the white flies are on these plants and uh, we'll continue to monitor these closely, uh, both for the YouTube channel and for myself, because I'm planning on these going into production sometime in February or so when the sun starts to come back and really cooperate. For now, they're just under a 24-hour-a-day uh, supplemental light. I probably will change that to a 16-hour-a-day timer soon, um, but I've got some wiring to do in order to do that. Uh, anyway, back to the point of the video. I'm sorry if I'm rambling a bit here, but I just really want to cover all the details. So anyway, so as soon as I uh, implemented that nutrition program, this uh, lemon tree, which had a few lemons on it, you can see there's a couple starting to ripen here, there, and where's the other one? Right there. Um, and then there's a few more here and there. Uh, but anyway, this thing burst into bloom, and you can see the number of f flowers on this plant. Uh, now that its nutrition is balanced correctly, it was in a very good soil. It was a Coast of Maine soil mix. Uh, I think it was their potting soil mix and their lobster mix. I uh, really wanted to make sure there was lots of nutrient available for flowering and fruiting. And I think I overdid it a bit, and the soil was a little out of balance. But uh, anyway, since that correction, massive flowering, and... Uh, Let's see, I, I gotta find them here quick, but there are new small lemons showing on this tree 
where the uh, flowers where the uh, previous flowers finished out and started producing an actual fruit. So uh, much less abortion on the plant from uh, from flowers. I had this plant actually had a decent amount of flowers on it back in the summer, and yet we only got one, two, three, four, five. I don't know. There might be seven or eight lemons on there total. And so now with this new flush of growth, I expect these all to continue. Yeah, there's one. You can see that whole cluster just burst out, and on the tip of that cluster is a small uh, lemon starting to mature out of its flower. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty excited about that, and 2017 has been a fantastic year uh, in big part thanks to Advancing Eco Agriculture. I wanted to thank them, and I wanted to uh, let people know that Advancing Eco Agriculture really knows what they're doing, and uh, when they say they can help you increase pest and disease resistance, they really can help you do that. Um, these people are really well educated, and they really understand plant nutrition and all the science and biology that goes along with that. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Advancing Eco Agriculture, and especially Mr. Kemp for your talks at uh, NOFA conferences and many other places and your ongoing educational program uh, is very much appreciated. And uh, you guys have saved me a whole lot of trouble. So thank you. Uh, thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network YouTube channel. I hope that you found this interesting. Uh, if you did and you'd like to see more videos along these lines going into more detail, I'd be happy to go into more detail and do more of this kind of stuff. Please uh, comment below and uh, let me know what else you would like to know or learn about. And uh, certainly I field all questions on YouTube. So thanks again for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. I hope you'll see us for our next video.